Amina Abdul Rahim, I'd like to request each one of us to just welcome her as she makes this presentation this afternoon or this evening or this morning, depending on where you are. Amina Abdurrahim is a nurse, a midwife, and a lecturer from the Department of Nursing, University of Maiguduri, Burno State, Nigeria. She studied in pre prestigious universities in Nigeria. Her first degree in Ah Amud Bello University, Zaria, and a master's in maternal and child health nursing in University of Nigeria, Nsuka Enugu State, and is at the verge of completion of her PhD in maternal and child health nursing with research focus on adolescent and infant care in Amud Bello University, Zaria. She has presented papers in national conferences and published in high impact journals. Amina will be making a presentation on effect of education intervention program on thermal care of pregnant adolescents attending antenatal clinic at primary health care centers in Zaria town, Nigeria. So I'll make, uh, I'll make um, Amina a presenter and Amina, you can continue from then on. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. I'm privileged to be part of this year's Virtual International Day of Midway uh, and uh, to present my research findings on adolescent motherhood. The, um, Amina Abdurrahim, as she has rightly said, from University of Maiduguri, and I would like to share my findings on effect of educational program on thermal care of pregnant adolescents attending antenatal clinic at primary education centers in Zaria, Nigeria. Thermal care is an essential part of neonatal daily care in order to prevent hypothermia. Hypothermia is known to be a major cause of neonatal mortality as it complicates other diseases at early neonatal period. Kaduna State is one of the northwestern Nigerian states with the highest prevalence. About 522 per 1,000 women of adolescents with childbearing. Occurring mostly within marriage and in male-led household. Poor thermal care practices around the time of birth are common practices among adolescent mothers. And probably due to their lack of experiences and knowledge of recommended optimal thermal care, optimal thermal care practices. This may also be complicated by the cultural, practice, cultural behavior called queen in, in the study region where first-time mothers are expected to exhibit a high level of shyness while caring for their infant, while interacting with their infant. Meanwhile, adolescent pregnancy is associated with preterm birth, low birth weight, and mortality. The need for behavioral and cultural modifications through professional health education program can assist pregnant pregnant adolescents to adopt optimal thermal care practices and midwives have responsibilities in helping them through this stage through training and health education. This study aims to evaluate the effect of health educational program on thermal care knowledge, practice, and satisfaction of pregnant adolescents attending antenatal clinic in Zareta. The objectives of this study is to assess the pregnant adolescent knowledge of thermal care before and after the educational program, to evaluate pregnant adolescent practice of thermal care after the educational program, and to determine the pregnant adolescent satisfaction of thermal care after the educational program. Materials and methods. It is a quasi-experimental design the adopted control interrupted time series approach. And the setting for the study is Zaria Cardinal State, 
which is one of the northwestern Nigerian states, and the target populations were pregnant adolescents who received antenatal care at selected primary health care centers in Zareta. And this also extends and covers the women and their infants up to six months postpartum. The sample size determination. The sample size was determined using cotton and delin etor formula, and 151 participants per each group were determined, making a total of 302 pregnant adolescents that were recruited for the study. Then the multi-stage sampling techniques. The, the, at the first stage, the sample, the Zaria, the at first stage, Zaria, which is made, the Zaria town, which is made out of two local government areas, was stratified into both Zaria and Sabungari local government, which are the two main local governments in the area. From the, that to the, that takes us to the second stage, whereby from each primary, pre, each primary health care centers, five primary health care centers were randomly selected from each local government area by simple balloting. And at stage three, there was proportionate allocation of participants based on the average number of clients attended antenatal clinic weekly. And at stage four, there was systematic sampling technique to select the required respondent in each eight centers. Still on materials and methods, the instrument for data collections. There were two instruments: the interview administrator questionnaire, which was used to elicit information on the demographic characteristics of participants, their knowledge of time care, and the satisfaction of the time care. While the other one, which is observation checklist, was used to elicit information on the practice of time care. So this instrument was uh, transformed into software application, open, kits, open data kits, which was now installed into the mobile phones of a uh, research assistants, and that was used to collect the data. So method of data collection, these were in three stages. At the pre-intervention, there was preparation and designing of intervention programs and instruments. The ethical clearance and permission was also obtained from appropriate authorities. There was also recruitment of research assistants at this stage. And then still at the pre-intervention stage, there was baseline data collection from both study and control groups. So at the second stage, which is intervention stage, this was also in two stages. At, the, at stage one, there was the those in the study group where the, the, the intervention stage was mainly on those in the study group, whereby they were trained on care, on thermal care. There was detailed description of what thermal care is all about, how they to adopt a practice called uh, uh, skin to skin contact, that's kangaroo mother care with their infant, the rooming him, they how to wear, keep warming their babies, exclusive breastfeeding and all that. And the uh, audiovisual is were used on to show all those on there on how to carry that out. So after the detailed description of what thermal care is all about, they were subjected to demonstrate what they've learned to really be sure that they really got what has been they've been trained for. So using the models. So then then that's that and that was mainly for the study group. So the intervention, the control group were not involved at this stage. So at the post-intervention, the post-test data, post data collection were in five stages because it was a controlled interrupted time series in which data need to be collected in a repeated uh, form, in a repeated stages over a long period of time. So at that post-data data collection was in five stages and this was scheduled based on their time of immunization. So the first data collection was at the first week when they came for BCG, the second one at six weeks when they came for Pentium 1, ten to, the third one was at 10 weeks when they are for Pentium 2, and the fourth, and the third, fourth one 
was 14th week when they come for Penta 3. And the last one, which is the last uh, data, post data, was at six months when they came for their measles immunization. So, and this post stage was both for the study and control group. So, the method of data analysis, the anal data collected was analyzed both discreetly and inferentially using Excel, SPSS, and Strata. And the chi square test, mean, and sedimentary person regression was also used and result. So, this is a social demographic characteristics of the respondent. And then we look at their group, the age group, the ethnic group, the religion, marital status, parity, and education. And from the test, the chi square test was used, and the p value from beginning of all the variables, it shows there was no statistical significant difference in all social demographic characteristics of both study and control groups which now confirmed the homogeneity of the two groups. So the next slide is talking about the knowledge of family care before and after the intervention. So the, at the, before, the knowledge, aggregate mean knowledge was 45 for the study group and 43 for a control group. And the aggregate mean percentage was 30 and 28 respectively for study and control group, and the chi-square of 0 0.236 and p-value of 0 0.6272 was obtained, which shows there was no significant difference between the knowledge of both study and control group before the intervention. But after the intervention, the knowledge of the study group improved to 99%, while that of a control group was still 43%, and the p value of 0. Less, p less than 0. 0.00 was obtained. So this result shows low and no, no significant difference in the pretest, the pretest mean knowledge between the studied groups, and at post test, the knowledge of study improved, study group improved significantly compared to that of a uh, pretest of both group and post test of the study of control group. So this finding is in line with the study in Egypt by Ali Abdul El Salam, 2019, and that of a nice director, 2017 in Indonesia, who discovered low knowledge mean score of infant care in the pretest and statistical significant improvement at post test. So this is the practice after the intervention. So the priorities at the post test for the study group was 93, which is 68%, while the, knowledge, the parties for the control group was 3%, but still p-value was less than 0. 0.00. So this result, so this result revealed improvement in the practice of time care after the intervention and statistical significant difference between the study and control groups. This study is, the finding of this study is similar to that of study in Nigeria by Olawi Etua 2021, who reported the group practice of kangaroo mother care among mothers. Although this study was a cross-sectional study, and the, the, the improved knowledge could be associated with the fact that that center where the study was conducted was a center, was a, a center that was designated for excellence for the care of a neonatal mothers with uh, preterm babies in the intensive care unit. And due to the effort of Federal Ministry of Health to its dedication and training of neonatal intensive care mothers, this could be the result why, despite the fact that this study is a cross-sectional, but is a form of the study is a form of intervention that is being carried out in that area. So that may be related. That may be the reason why there's increase in the practice at that setting, despite the fact that I cross-recognized it. However, the finding is in line with the quasi-experimental study conducted in Indonesia, which in which mothers in the study group showed improved term care practices after the educational intervention. Then the next slide is satisfaction of term care after the intervention. 
So the mean score was for the study group was 4.8, which is 96%, 96%, while that of a control group was 3.6, which is 72%. So this finding, and the p value of 0 0.0005 was obtained. This finding, the finding of this study shows 96, 90, 96 and 72 of more than the study and control group respectively were satisfied with thermal care rule. And there are statist and statistical difference existed between the study and control group after six months postpartum. The findings is similar to the result of studying in Iran, where there is improved maternal rule satisfaction in study group and statistical significant difference in the level of satisfaction between the study and control group after the educational training. So the line chart, the next slide is depicting the line chart so the effect of intervention over uh, on the, the is showing the effect of the intervention on the knowledge over six months postpartum and uh, from the chart you can see that both the study and control group have almost the same pre-intervention knowledge so uh, after the intervention we can see that the knowledge for the study group improved. There was great increase, increment in the knowledge on the study group. And this was sustained throughout the period of uh, observation. For the, however, for the study control group, this, the, increment, the increase is very slow, is very slight, is slight increment and gradual. And this was also sustained throughout the period of observation. So the, this chart is depicting the strength of the design used for this study, in which is able to distinguish the impact of intervention from the secular trend. What I mean by secular trend is the change that could have happened even in the absence of the intervention. And this has been shown in the control group. We can see that despite that there was no intervention, there was slight increment in the, in, the, in the level of knowledge, which is very slow and slight. But for the, for the, for the impact of that intervention, which makes the, those in, in the study group to have great increment in their knowledge, and which was also sustained. So this is part of the strength of the study design, which is country interrupted time series design that was used. It's able to distinguish the impact of intervention from the secular trend trend that changes that will have happened even in the absence of the intervention so by implication the program has greatly improved and uh, sustained the knowledge of the participant for a long time after the intervention but there is a slight decline towards the terminal end of the of the observation which has six months and this is attributed to the nature of Human being, whereby there is likely for them to experience some in the slight decrease or extinction in the knowledge acquired of, after some period of time, and this could be improved by continuous education. We can also deduce from these findings that the mothers that got the intervention, there is tendency for them to still have good practice in their subsequent delivery, but there is need for continuous edu education. The next slide is line chart showing the effect of intervention on practice over six months postpartum. This also can consider this also follows the trend of the knowledge, but there is one thing that we need to see from here. We can just can see clearly that there, there is no pre-intervention data collection for the practice. That is one of the limitations. That is the main limitation of this study, in which which was discovered during the pilot study that we could not establish, we cannot establish the practice prior to delivery. And the reason being that majority of the participants, they are primary gravida with, low, no, with no knowledge or experience about what thermal care practice is all about. So we could not establish with intervention. So that's why, and despite that, after the intervention, we could see a great increase in the practice. That's improved increase in the practice of uh, those in study group compared to some those in study group. And that was also sustained 
throughout the period of observation. In conclusion, this, the result shows that the health education program will significantly improve knowledge, practice, and satisfaction of adolescent mothers on Thermike. Therefore, there is need for midwives to continue health educating adolescent mothers. And the recommendation, there is need to continue continuous training and education of adolescent mothers on the thermal care. Because the view to the what happened in the my especially in the study region, those in with first timer mothers, they are is expected to exhibit a level of shyness when interacting and caring for their baby. And that may also may influence or affect the way they do some of the essential care of their newborn. So with this cultural reorientation and the uh, health education, it gives them that confidence in give proper care to their infant. And that's why there's need for us to, especially these young mothers, there's need for continuous training and educating them. And uh, we also encourage similar studies should also be repeated in other parts of the country. As I earlier said, this study could not establish baseline data, which is the limitation of thermal care, because most of the participants were primary gravida who do not have any experience of what care, thermal care practice is all about. Thank you very much for listening. And this Pretty is much, some um, of the references. Yes, thank you very much, Amina. Thank you for uh, the presentation. Um, we appreciate and uh, you've done a good job. So there are a few questions that have come in from the chat. Uh, there are some comments and um, some questions. There's a question from Peggy. Could you measure a clinical impact after the introduction of thermal care? That is the first question. And there's another one that uh, asks, was satisfaction with the thermal care knowledge really a question of interest in your study design? Okay. So the first one, uh, we said that we, we measure clinical, that would be an, another aspect or another way of going about the measuring the impact of the intervention. Fine, we can do that maybe going into the clinical area and, and uh, see how the outcome, the what, the out, the, well, I say the outcome of a uh, new net, new net, new outcome has been in the areas compared to, so it's a, it's a nice, which is another area in which we can assess the impact of the, and it's a very nice one in assessing the impact of the such intervention. Yes, clinical impact is a nice one. Yes, what is satisfaction? Yes, because it's known that when we're talking about the maternal role, for you to say mothers are satisfied, are they, they are able to deliver what is expected as a mother, having been, been delivered, what is expected, do the proper care, you know the knowledge, there is need to, to, to establish whether they are really satisfied with, as a mother the motherhood is there let that satisfaction needs to be uh, the, the examined or to eva we need to evaluate that because it's part of way when we're talking about the maternal role attainment or when we talk any form of maternal role when we, when you give what is expected as a mother we would now like to assess whether are you really satisfied is it what you have compared to those that were not the training that was given and what you are given, what you give to your child as a mother, are you really satisfied with it? I think it's a, it's a nice one to, to chop. Uh, thank you. Thank you for responding. Uh, there are some comments. Thank you. A lot of education is what is needed here. Such a detailed study. And uh, thank you for this research. I'm not sure whether there are any more questions or comments. Indeed, I think, uh, Amina, you are very um, detailed and I think um, very clear. And also, um, I guess everybody was able to understand and to follow you clearly. 